Hello everyone, my name is Umang Sushteva and today we're going to talk about buying a property. If you want to buy a property back home, back in India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, anywhere, most real estate people, they don't need license. They don't need to go to college to sell properties or provide you best advice how to buy properties. We also have a real estate company back home, Khalsa Properties in Ambala City, Narangar Road, Haryana, India. Their contact number is 93551-30122. And in Canada, you need to have real estate license to deal with real estate properties, to sell or even to provide an advice how to buy properties. Today, we are here in the Southern Reality Group to talk with Mr. Marco Lopez, and he's gonna provide us best and basic tips on how to buy properties in Canada. So we're going to talk to Mr. Marco Lopez. Stay with us. Hello again. My name is Umang Sushteva and we are here to talk about basic tips on how to buy property in Canada. What do you need to know to buy properties? And I know a lot of things, but I'm not a professional. We're sitting with a professional today, Mr. Marco Lopez, who has 15 years of experience in real estate selling, brokerage of everything. So. We're going to talk to Mr. Marco Lopez. How are you doing today, sir? Thank you, Kumar. Thank you for inviting me to your channel. Uh, it's, a, it's an honor. Um, yes, uh, like he says, I have uh, actually 16 years buying and selling properties for myself. Uh, this is how I start in real estate. Um, I carry a license. Um, I become a broker in 2009. Since then, I, I carry a license, uh, commercial and residential. And um, it's funny that you say that because back in in India you don't need a license to 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 you don't exercise this type of work. Yeah. And in my country it's the same. Uh, I, come, I come from Mexico and um, you don't need a license. But it, just now the industry is changing. So just now they're applying they're applying that uh, uh, law or requirement to have a license uh, in Mexico. And I also have a license in Mexico, by the way. Wow. So. Yeah, that's great. So now you know, if you want to buy a property in India, we're sitting right here, Khalsa Properties. If you want to buy a property in Mexico, Mr. Marco Lopez in here. If you want to buy a property in Canada, Mr. Marco Lopez is here. So yes, first of all, we want to share your contact information if anyone wants to buy a property in Canada. So can they contact you? Would you please say your... Absolutely. Uh, but you can Google a uh, very simple equipelopez.com. Uh, or you can search me through uh, my company Southern. Uh, just uh, type Marco Lopez, and my email is mlopez at southern.com. My phone number is 514-576-4996. Marco, first of all, I'm a client. I don't know nothing about buying a property. Mm -hmm. I'm an empty jar. Mm -hmm. Please hold me up yeah. of with course. knowledge. Of course, well, the most important thing that I tell somebody like you that is have no idea how to start is to know yourself as an investor and as a customer as well. You have to understand that uh, you can buy revenue properties. That is, that's what I specialize. When you have multiple doors and brings you a revenue every month, uh, you can also buy your first condo. Uh, that is another type of uh, investment when only you are co-owner with other co-owners of the whole building, but then you have your owner of these um, four walls that is your condominium or your apartment, or you can go to uh, uh, single houses when you can have a house, uh, especially that's more like uh, when somebody has a family and uh, you can buy a house as well. Um, or also as well, commercial or semi-commercial. When it's other type of uh, um, financing, um, uh, it's different loans with the bank. You have to study not only the, the project and the building, but at the same time, the area where you, you are investing. Investment, sorry. No problem. Um, so yeah, you have to know yourself first of what you want. And then starting from that point, then I can tell you, you know what, maybe, uh, to start with a, a duplex, with two apartments, that would be a, a, something interesting. Or maybe, you know what, um, you, you, you don't wanna deal with tenants and, and doing renovations and uh, 
uh, chasing your rent every first of the month, yeah. you're happy with a condo, that's another type of investment. For an example, we are a family of two, mm -hmm. me and my wife. Mm -hmm. We're looking to buy a house, mm -hmm. a property. Our budget is about 500,000 to 600,000. Okay. How much money do we need, first of all, to buy a property? Okay. Well, in Canada, uh, when it's your first property, the loan, the bank or the law, requires that you have at least 5% cash down, plus other expenses. Example, if you're gonna buy something like 500,000, uh, you will need to have at least 25,000 in the bank. Um, and it has to be, you have to show the proof of income. Uh, obviously, you, you've been working for so long, you save your money or your partners give you that amount. Um, or their savings, and uh, then the bank can lend you up to 95% of the total amount of the purchase price. Um, so that's the first thing. That's the first thing you have to start with. Uh, have some 5% plus other expenses. It comes to like the inspection when you will find the house. You need to inspect the house obviously by a professional. Um, some fees like uh, notary fees moving fees, welcome taxes. So all these things that uh, you have to pre prevent when you become an owner, you have to also pay for that. Does having a pre-approved mortgage help? Absolutely. Actually, that's one of the first things that I ask um, a client, a new buyer, um, especially in markets like today when it's so competitive and there's so many buyers looking for a place, um, a pre-approval I don't know if I have one here, actually, but if, let me see. A pre-approval will help us to move forward with the, no, I don't, I don't have, sorry. Okay, that's fine. But it's a letter that it tells you your power of a purchase. Um, so let's, yeah, example, let's say you see the house with, uh, house with your wife and you decide to make an offer, and then somebody else sees the same house and decide, they decide to make an offer as well. If this person doesn't have a pre-approval, but you have a pre-approval, logically, the seller will choose you um, if the price and condition are the same. Because it shows that you're serious, one. Two, you already went to the bank to do your homework, and um, you have a backup from the bank that you can purchase a property. And how about the architecture? For me, it's okay. I'm flexible. For my wife, it's okay. We can adjust. But we also have some special needs for people who have disabilities, any kind of disabilities. Mm -hmm. They have some special needs. Mm -hmm. So what kind of architecture we can expect to buy in a property according to our needs? Or can we change it? Can we ask the seller to do some modifications? do some repairs before we move in to make some changes. Mm -hmm. Does it does it work like this or? Uh, yes, I mean, in reality, when you put a property for sale, uh, it's an invitation to somebody to put an offer on the property. And once the property is not sold, you can negotiate everything you want. Um, when you say architect, I would say more like an inspect inspector because an architect will be will use an architect for other special okay, situations. But yeah, the inspector can um, verify, verify the property from A to Z. Always this has to be a visual inspection. So electricity, plumbing, uh, foundation, roof, attic, all those things the inspection has to see. It's good for you so you protect yourself. Uh, when it comes to special needs, I wouldn't recommend to ask the seller okay. to do some work for you. I explain why. Uh, you can tell the seller, well, um, I'm gonna buy your house with the condition that you put a ramp for handicap outside, outside of the, 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 the property. The seller may say, you know what? Yes, I accept your condition. Everything is good. Um, you buy the property, you go to the notary, the ramp is there, and as soon as you use it, it breaks, it collapses. Okay, when I go back to the seller and say, hey, you didn't do it right. Well, you didn't use the material that you're supposed to use, but you didn't ask for that. So, when it comes to repairs or renovations or adjustments to the house, it's better if you do it to your own taste, and you can negotiate that with the seller before even purchase the property. So you can fix that with the cost? 
and you can okay. also do it to your own uh, standards. Absolutely. Right? You can, if you need a ramp uh, made of a metal, and he makes a ramp made of wood, well, chances are that uh, the metal is stronger than the wood. I have one more question. Mm -hmm. How important is the location? You want to buy a house from there. You know, you want to buy a house to raise a family in the house. Mm -hmm. How important is the location? And what kind of street the house uh, is located on? These things. Mm -hmm. Location is important all over the world. Uh, in India, in Mexico, in Canada, in Europe, the location is the, one of the keys in real estate. Uh, first of all, you have to go with the mentality that when you purchase a house, if anything happens in the future, uh, a recession, an economic crisis, a co pandemic, a co COVID, a, a divorce, a, the kids, they grow, they grow. You have another baby, you need to move. The first thing of location is that if you put the house for sale, the house is gonna sell fast. So you have to say that location is very important. So if anything you need to sell, you can sell fast. You don't want to buy in a bad location where it takes nine months to a year to sell if you need to sell fast for any reason. So that's, in, that's number one. Two, um, if you want to raise a family, for example, well, the better location, better services for the family, closer to supermarkets, closer to highways, closer to better schools for the kids, the parks, the transportation, metro, so location is important. When it comes to buy a revenue property, let's say you want to have a you want to have a building with six units. Well, your tenants, they're going to pay more. They're going to pay top dollar to be close to metro, to close transportation. Especially in Canada, when it's so cold, you don't want to spend 30 minutes to go to the supermarket walking at minus 40, right? You want to do something fast? Yeah, absolutely. So location is one of the best, one of the most important things when you buy real estate. And how do you choose the best real estate person to help you with okay. because there are a lot of real estate people in the market some have good reviews some have bad reviews some don't have any reviews <laughs> but <laughs> they all want to work they all want to make money of course but not all of them genuinely wants to help you mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. how do you choose the right person that's a that's a, an, an amazing question i think that uh, um, word of mouth is the best thing to do uh, you can always ask a friend or a family member if they know somebody. Uh, chances are that they, they know somebody that uh, they, if they did a good job, they're going to refer you. If they did a bad job, they won't refer you. So at least you, don't go, you won't go with this person. The second thing is that if you don't know anybody, well, you can go to the website and Google it. Uh, but I think that the first thing that I would ask a real estate broker is, first of all, you do this full time. That's one of the first questions that I will ask somebody if I want to hire him as my broker. A lot of people does that in part time. So probably they will have all the time to take care of you when it comes to a new property in the market or when it comes to maybe you find the right property, but you need to negotiate. And this person that doesn't have enough experience, he cannot negotiate to your behalf in the best way. So yeah. you do that. You do this full time. This is the first question. The second question is, um, do you work in this area? Example, I have a license to sell in Quebec. Uh, my uh, sector is La Salle and La Chine. Those are the sectors that I, I know the most. But if you put me to sell in Quebec City, I can do it. But I, I, it will take me longer to find the best location, the, the, the best property, uh, the type of construction. So. The, best, the second question is, do you work in this area when I want to buy a house? You know it very well. Uh, the third question is, uh, how many houses you sold in the past year? Or how many houses you sold in your career? You know, some brokers have been working 10 years in the East industry, and they probably sold maybe five houses a year. Other brokers like me, um, I sold, uh, we, we, we just closed our 500 transactions. Wow. So that means that I have the experience to put 500 sellers and 500 buyers, put them together and close a deal, right? So that's that's important. How many transactions you, you did in your career? Um, other question that you, sh you should ask to your broker is, uh, because everything is transparency in our um, domain, in our uh, industry. 
Uh, you had any complaint from 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 uh, previous clients? Do you ever do you ever been in court from a client? That's very important. And if you go to the real estate board, at least in Quebec, what I know is that uh, you can see the broker that already uh, had any legal situations or problems with uh, with somebody. Uh, so that's that's a, that's also something you can ask. Absolutely, it's it's very clear how you explained it. I want to ask you one more thing: pre-construction house and a fully constructed new house, mm -hmm. or an old property mm -hmm. for a first-time house buyer. What do you recommend? Well, listen, everybody likes new, right? You wanna you buy a car and you wanna have something new. You wanna smell it. You you wanna worry about it changing the motor or changing the brakes uh, so i think everybody loves new um, when it comes to 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 uh, old houses i can be honest with you that some older constructions they're more solid and better built than the constructions they're doing now okay. sometimes contractors in order to make a, a, a profit they use the cheapest material, the least one to control, build and next. Let's finish the building, next. Let's finish. It's, it's a business for them, right? Obviously with some regulations, they, they have to protect the public. But I would prefer, depending the area that you're looking for, some older constructions than new constructions. Second thing that is very important is that now because of COVID, um, you know, prices went crazy in everything. Uh, material, labor, just a few, just say about uh, just when COVID start, a two by four piece of wood used to cost three dollars before COVID. When COVID started, it went to up to twelve dollars a unit, four hundred percent more than the, the normal price. So in times like today, material is can be very expensive. If you can buy, if you buy something new, and you sign a contract to buy a, a house for $500,000, today the contractor can come to you and say, Mr. Mr. Buyer, client, the house is not gonna cost 500 today. You have to buy it at 550 because my material went up. And you can say, you know what? No, I refuse and you lost your house. Or you can say, well, I accept. But uh, you cannot fight it. Um, so in times like today, I will go maybe not too old, but not too new. Something already built. Okay. So we're gonna finish it up with this last question. Mm -hmm. How the industry has changed after COVID? How's the market doing now, before and after COVID? Mm -hmm. What's the difference? Okay, huge difference. Um, when COVID start, uh, I think everybody was panicked all over the world. Uh, the market, stock market is already going up and down. Um, I remember that when it started COVID, um, we were forced to don't work with clients. And that's why we keep social distance now. Um, and the first two months, was, they were difficult. So nobody was allowed to visit clients. Nobody was allowed to work. Uh, we were working from home. And then suddenly, about maybe more in June, boom, everything went up. Uh, because a lot of people they didn't want to take the chance to have people over in their houses, so the inventory was very small, and there were a lot of buyers out there trying to find a house. So prices went up, prices went up. And even today, I mean, it's almost holidays. Uh, usually, it's like a not too quiet, but it's a quiet season. It's still very active today, so prices went up. What is going to be? Nobody knows. I think that. Um, the beginning of next year will be still very active and then maybe after the summer will be a little more stable in terms of prices but the activity is still there so guys we had a little chat a nice conversation with mr marco lopez about small tips basic tips how to buy a property in canada what to look for when you're buying a property I hope it was a nice informative video. We want to thank Mr. Marco Lopez. My pleasure. For the valuable time. My pleasure. And I really request you once more to share your contact information if anyone wants to buy a house in Quebec.
or in La Salle area or La Chine area? Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, once again, Marco Lopez. Um, my email address is mlopez at soton.com and my cell phone is 514-576-4996. Thank you very much.